In this video, we're going to take a look at a legal problem called jump game. So given an array of non-negative integers nums, uh, you're initially positioned at the first index of the array. Each element in the array represents your maximum jump length at that position. So determine if you're able to reach that uh, last index in the array, right? So you can see here we have an example of an integer array. And the output should be true because you can see here um, for this element, right? Because we're starting at the first element in the array. If in this case, you can see for the current element, we have two maximum jump, right? So in this case, you can see here, we can have, we can jump to one, we can jump to two, right? The maximum jump length is two, right? Um, and then you can see here, once I jump to three or one, right? If I jump to a one, I can jump to a one, another one, right? Because the maximum jump length is just one. And once I'm at this position, I can, the maximum jump length is also one. So if I jump to another one, in this case is here, right? I'm at the last last position in the array. And now if I want to choose a different path, where right? if I want to jump to here, right? In this case, I can jump to here, but I can also jump to the first, uh, the, the second element, right? So in this case, the, the maximum jump length at that position is three. So in this case, I can go here, I can go here, I can also go here. So you can see here, if I go here, I'm already it, right? I'm already at the last position. So in this case, you can see, it doesn't matter which path we took, um, the, at the end, you can see we're basically returning true because we can start from the first element in the array and then jump to the last element in the array, right? And you can also see here, we have another example where you can see we're starting at the first element. If we jump to three, in this case, one, two, three, it'll be right here, right? So in this case, I jump to three, in this case, I'm right here, and then you can see the maximum jump length at that position is zero. So in this case, there is no way for us to jump to the last element. And now if I want to jump to somewhere like here, maybe like, let's say if we're two, I also will jump to here, right? So and, and this place right here cannot jump to any other spot. So in this case, uh, this path is basically not good, right? So if I jump to one, same thing, if I jump to here, I cannot jump to the last element, so I should return false. So we can see here, um, basically, we're given a non-negative integer values. And we want to find out, um, and we can only jump forward, right? And then, so you can see here, we're basically given an array of between, or in this case, a length between one uh, and above. And then for each and every single element, it's all positive. So the goal is we want to solve this problem, right? So one way we can solve this problem is we can basically treat it as a DP problem. And we can basically say, okay, for each and every single element that we have in the array, right? If I want to know if I can be able to jump to the last element, um, I can do a DFS to search to see if this element can be able to reach the last element, or this element can be able to reach to the last element. If one of them, if one of those two elements can be able to reach the last element, then we know that this element can be able to reach to the last element, right? So let me show you an example. If we have two three, one, let me just write it bigger basically. So you can see here we have these five elements, right? So if I'm starting at here, I'm asking if this element can be able to reach to the last element. And this element will basically do the same thing. It will ask those three elements to see if they can be able to reach the last element. Well, the thing is that this element right here is the last element. So in this case, this element can be able to reach the last element, right? So therefore we return true. And now let's say if we have an example like this in this case you can see here i will ask this element will ask it's uh the first element in this case is two right so in this case two can two reach the last element right and two will ask its neighbor elements in this case those two to see if they can be able to reach the last element in this case this one cannot and this one cannot because if they reach the here is basically uh the max jump length is zero right so then we backtrack to here, right? In this case, we're going to ask this element to see if they can be able to jump to the last element. In this case, it can't, right? So in this case, if we if it jumped to, so for this element, it will also have to ask its neighbor elements, in this case, zero. So in this case, this element cannot. So we're just backtracking, returning false, right? So you can see here that um, we're basically visiting this elements. where there's a lot of duplicate calls, right? So we can basically use DP um, either bottom-up approach or a top-down approach to basically cache this, right? So in this case, if for this element right here, if I want to know if this element can be able to do it or reach to the last element, or this element can be able to reach to the last element, and this element can be able to reach to the last element, and we'll basically save the result in a, in a cache array, right? 
So in this case, what we're gonna do is that, um, let's say if in this case index zero, we don't know yet, but in this case index zero, one, two, three. Okay, so we know that index three cannot be able to reach it, right? So in this case, let's just, uh, let's say we have like this, right? So in this case, index three, I cannot reach it, so I will set it to false, right? And I'll backtrack to here. And then I go down this path, in this case, uh, index two, right? So index two, I know that if I jump, and then index two will ask its neighbor elements, in this case, neighbor elements is a three. Three, we already computed that before, it's a false. So in this case, we're just going to set this element, right? To false because you, this element cannot reach the last element so we backtrack to tell this path is false and then we go down to number two in this case element two or in this case uh, index one index one you can see here if i index one i also ask its neighbor elements in this case this is false we already compute that and this is also false we already compute that so therefore this element is also false right Okay, so in this case, we backtracked it here, and then we know that, hey, all four, all three paths, they're all returning false. So therefore, this element right here is also false, right? So you can see here, this is basically a DP way to solve this problem. You can use a top-down approach and a bottom-up approach, right? But in this video, I'm gonna talk about how we can be able to use a different approach, right, to solve this problem. Because if we were to use a DP problem, right, if we were to use a DP to solve this problem, so here you can see that basically this is our DP approach, right? So in our DP approach, you can see here, this is our, in, this is our top down approach. We have a Boolean cache array with the size of N. And then you can see here, we're basically just going to, uh, starting with the first element, we're basically trying to set up our base case if the current nums.length, uh, sorry, if the current index is like bigger than or equal to nums.length, then we just return true. Um, and then in this case, if it's already been in the cache, then we can just return the cache element. And then we are basically trying to calculate the, the, the jump, right? Uh, not the, yeah, in this case, the max jump for the current element, right? So we're gonna go from one to max jump. Uh, for each iteration, we're basically just gonna say, this is our current index plus i, right? For, you know, the, the, the first iteration, the first jump, the second iteration, the second jump, right? Or two jumps. Um, and then we're basically just going to get the result to see, hey, can this element reach the last, or can this index reach the last element? In this case, if it can, okay, well, we're basically just gonna set the current element to true and then return that. If not, we can just set the current element to false and return false, right? So this is basically how we can do it in a DP approach. And you can see the time complexity is gonna be in square, right? Because for each and every single element, we're basically, uh, or yeah, for each and every single element, basically visiting, we're iterating through the uh, the current elements number of um, uh, choices, right? So let's say if we have like a bunch of fives, right? So let's say we have like a bunch of fives. Um, you can see here, let's say we have five, 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 right? And then the size of the array is five. And then you can see here, we're basically going for all the choices that we have, right, to reach to the end. And But still, like, of course, some of them will be cached, but you can see that, like, if, we're, if this guy is asking this guy first, then this guy also asking these guys first, right? So you can see that we're basically just going to visit, uh, or in this case, the time complexity will be ju basically just gonna be in square, right? So now let's take a look at how we can be able to improve the time complexity down to a linear time complexity. So to optimize our current time complexity down to linear, because we know that current um, time complexity for our DPE solution is n squared, right? For each and every single element, we basically have to re iterate through the remaining elements that we have, right? So in this case, to solve this problem, to optimize it down to from n squared to linear, we know that we have to remove something, right? In this case, you can see there, uh, we have to um, find some way that we can be able to um, uh, uh, replace this iteration to check, okay, from from the current element to the number of max jump that we can have for the current element, right? We're basically kind of iterating through the remaining arrays. How can we be able to avoid this iteration? 
But what we can do is that we can basically have a pointer and saying that, hey, if this element right here, well, let's just say that if this element right here can be able to reach the last element, right? If this element can be able to reach the last element, then my question is, can this element be able to reach to this element? right so in this case if i have this question then i don't have to iter i don't have to check the remaining elements to see hey if can this element reach to the four all i'm checking is can this element reach to the last element that can be able to reach to the last element right so basically you can see here that um what we're going to do is that we're going to start from the bottom right so you can see we're starting from the last element and then this is our pointer Right, our pointer is pointing to the last element. So we're asking to see if this element can be able to reach this to this element. In this case, it can't, right? So in this case, one, uh, you know, plus the current element's value, it can be able to reach the here. So then what we're gonna do is that we're gonna set, hey, this is our goal, right? This is our point now. This our pointer should point it to here now. Now we're asking this element to see if it can reach this element right here. In this case, in this case, it can, right? So now we're going to get our pointer points to here, right? And then what we're gonna do is that we're going to continue to ask this question, can this element reach to here? Yes, it can, right? So in this case, we're gonna get our pointer points to here, and then this element asks, this element check to see if it can reach it here. In this case, in this case it can, so we're just returning true, right? So you can see that this is basically how we're gonna solve this problem by basically just removing that iteration, right? And avoid iterating through all the elements that we that we could or the remaining uh, elements in the array to check to see if the current element can be able to jump to the last element. All we have to do is we're changing the pointer so that we check to see if the remaining elements, right, from the end to the start, the remaining elements can be able to reach to the current pointer, right? So same thing here. Let's say we have a false example here. So you can see where the goal starting is here. Can this element reach here? In this case, it can't. So we don't move our pointer. And then when we once we get to here, can this element reach to here? It, it doesn't, it, it can't, right? Because one moved to here, it cannot be. Two, in this case, two cannot reach to here. Three, three cannot reach to here. So therefore, you can see here the pointer is still pointed to uh, the last element, right? So therefore, this example, this output cannot reach to the last element, right? The only case that we can return true is because is when the pointer iterating through can be able to move to here, right? Because now you can see that, hey, we can, this element is satisfied. Whatever the pointer is pointing to basically means that this element right here can be able to reach the last element, right? So now we know how to solve it. Let's take a look at the code. So you can see here, this is the code, right? So we're basically um, going from the second last element to the first element in the array. And then all we're checking here is that if the current index plus the current number, the current index, uh, current num in the array, um, if it's bigger than or equal to the goal, right? If it's bigger than or equal to the goal, we just reposition our goal to be equal to the in current index, and then we're just going to, tr uh, we're iterating through the array all the way to zero. And at the end, all we're doing is, all we're doing is basically check to see if the goal, right, the pointer is equal to zero. If it's not, we know that index zero cannot be able to reach to the end of the array. So basically, you can see this is how we. Um, bring the time complexity down to a linear time complexity and the space complexity is basically constant. So there you have it and thank you for watching.